Is Homo erectus a human ancestor or an evolutionary dead end? To better understand the nature of Homo erectus, the significance of its evolutionary history in East Asia and the role it played in human evolution, we must first define the term itself, as it has come to mean different things to different people. For some, Homo erectus is the first truly pandemic human species and the direct ancestor of archaic and modern Homo sapiens. For others, Homo erectus is an intriguing footnote in the story of human evolution, a distinct species that emerged in the Far East only to become extinct without a trace when modern humans expanded their range beyond Africa to include the far reaches of the Old World. From this perspective, Asian Homo erectus is the Eastern version of another failed human experiment. The conception of Homo erectus is thus constrained by two opposing views of human evolution as part of an intractable debate over the origins of anatomically modern humans. The Jokudian Homo erectus site, 42 kilos southwest of Beijing, is where Peking Man was discovered. Peking Man is a Homo erectus specimen identified through a complete skull cap, discovered in 1929. The hominin lived approximately 500,000 years ago. Peking Man, sometimes known as Homo erectus pekinensis, is a subspecies of Homo erectus that lived at the Jokudian cave site in modern northern China. The site holds the largest single collection of Homo erectus fossils, with 40 incomplete skeletons discovered. The site has also yielded remains of Homo sapiens, an anatomically modern human. Dozens of other mammal fossils, including extinct giant deer, hyenas and saber-toothed cats, have been discovered at the Jukudian site, also known as Dragon Bone Hill. Because of different interpretations of the evidence, proposed dates for when Peking Man inhabited this site vary greatly, including 700,000 to 200,000 years ago, 670,000 to 470,000 years ago, or no earlier than 530,000 years ago. The oldest animal remains date back to 690,000 years ago, with tools dating back to 670,000 years ago, while another authority dates the tools to no earlier than 530,000 years ago. The fossils from Dragonbone Hill's cave sites show that the region was once populated by large animals, such as elephants, rhinos, and extinct horses, which would have provided carrion for local scavengers such as hyenas, bears, humans, and ravens. The Homo erectus fossils discovered at Jokudian location number one have been important research material for studying human evolution attracting a lot of attention from both domestic and international scholars. Joe Kudian location number 15 is 70 meters from location number 1 and was discovered in 1932. It yielded a large number of stone tools and mammal fossils from the late Middle Pleistocene, around 200,000 years ago. Recently, a research team from the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology of the Chinese Academy of Sciences used new techniques such as CT scanning and three-dimensional reconstruction to identify a human parietal bone from mammal fossils at the Jokudian site, location number ball 15 in Beijing. This is the first time a Chinese research team has discovered a Pleistocene human fossil at the Jokudian site since 1973. The human parietal bone discovered this time is yellowish-brown in color, completely fossilized, and has bone thickness, curvature and size that roughly overlap with the right parietal bone of the original Homo erectus cranium from Zhou Kudian. The new discovery of the human fossil at Zhou Kudian will contribute to in-depth studies of human evolution in this region through comparative anatomy and molecular biology, providing extremely important and critical specimen materials for exploring the evolutionary patterns of ancient humans in China, according to researchers. What do we know about our earliest human ancestors? These ancient hominins roamed the earth three times longer than modern humans. Nonetheless, scientists today still have a lot to learn about our evolutionary relatives. Homo erectus fossils do not all look alike, and the differences between the earliest and most recent reveal significant variation as the species evolved over time. They also differ by location, much like humans do in physical characteristics around the world. Hominins have been on the planet for at least 1.9 million years, more than six times longer than Homo sapiens, 
whose earliest fossils date back to about 300,000 years. As regards the morphological distinction between Homo sapiens and Homo erectus, the some investigators recognize them as subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens erectus, in accordance with their overlapping morphology. In fact, the expansion of Asian paleontology has provided insight into the interwoven evolution of Homo erectus in eastern Eurasia. When it comes to our ancient ancestors, there is still more to learn than we currently know. For example, the million-year-old Homo erectus skull, dubbed Jungsian Man III, is exceptionally well-preserved when compared to previous discoveries. Chinese researchers discovered the ancient human skull earlier this year. It was discovered about a dozen miles outside of Yunyang, central China, near where two other skulls were discovered decades ago. Yunxian Man III is believed to have occurred around one million years ago, similar to its predecessors. And it appears to be in the best condition yet. The Yunxian fossils are the oldest on mainland Asia. The discovery of the well-preserved third skull could reveal much about the evolution of our ancient ancestors. The first Yunxian skulls were discovered in 1989, when Chinese researchers began digging in response to reports of ancient animal bones in the area, about 1,500 kilos southwest of the Peking Man site. The following year, a second skull was discovered, this time in fairly good condition. Indeed, the Asian phase of Homo erectus evolution is exemplified by the site at Yunxian and the age, 936,000 years, of the best-preserved skull, Yunxian II, excavated at this site. With regard to the Yunxian II specimen, one study concluded that the facial features of the fossil displayed a pattern close to modern humans, and that the assignment of the skull to Homo erectus extended the variability connected to this species. The site is unique because of the extensive work done by Chinese researchers and international scientists on various aspects of the remains over the last several decades. Researchers examined the geology of the area, as well as human fossils and animal remains, to gain a better understanding of what occurred. Aside from these three skulls, approximately 500 stone tools and 2,000 animal remains have also been discovered. Based on how these remains and tools are jumbled together, researchers may be excavating the remains of an ancient, catastrophic flood that killed both hominins and animals alike. Cut marks on some animal bones, for example, could indicate that other hominins who survived the flood scavenged the animal's remains. In contrast, human skulls filled with sediment fairly quickly after death. This harmed the skulls in some ways, but it may also have helped preserve the remains. In fact, the skulls and surrounding sediment mineralized over time, fusing together to form large stones. More than a decade ago, scientists used 3D imaging techniques to reconstruct what the skulls might have looked like before they were crushed and misshapen over millions of years. Even though three fairly complete human skulls have been discovered in the area, much remains unknown. For starters, scientists are unsure whether the remains are Homo erectus or something else. We have some Homo erectus remains in Africa that date roughly to this time period, but they do not appear to be very similar. For one thing, the African remains have a larger brain capacity. It's possible that the younger remains are a local Asian variant of Homo erectus. While the African fossil record of Homo erectus is more extensive, there are very few fossil records that date back to the Yunxian discoveries in mainland Asia almost one million years ago. Future research on this new skull will be published in the coming months and years. But in the meantime, perhaps even more bones are waiting to be discovered. In fact, we have a better understanding of what Homo erectus might have looked like in Southeast Asia, particularly in Java, where the species was discovered in the late 19th century. But the Yunxian fossils differ slightly from these Indonesian remains. As stated, they are Homo erectus-like creatures, but lack some of the more typical characteristics. These skulls also seem to have flatter faces than Neanderthals and look more like Homo sapiens, and they are very different from some of China's next nearest hominins, the Peking Man fossil discovered near Beijing and dating back only 500,000 years. Indeed, half a million years is a long time, so the Yunxian remains could be from an ancestral group to the Beijing remains. Lastly, these uncertainties boil down to the fact that 
While the new skull is impressive, we still don't know much about how these fossils fit into hominin evolution. Nevertheless, the analyses of such morphologically distinctive archaic human lineages from Asia, Europe and Africa suggest that the diversification of the Homo genus may have had a much deeper timescale than previously presumed. Indeed, the phylogenetic relationship between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens has long been debated. Before the appearance of modern humans in Asia, some archaic fossils, such as those from Namada, Maba, Dali, Jinyushan, Shuchang, and Hualongdong, show mosaic combinations of features present in Homo erectus, Neanderthals, and Homo sapiens. Therefore, it is widely believed that these Asian hominins are critical for studying the later evolution of the genus Homo and the origin of Homo sapiens. However, the incomplete preservation of these fossils and the fact that they have largely been described by advocates of regional continuity have made it difficult to integrate them into the wider picture of human evolution. Some researchers have proposed that all Middle Pleistocene hominins belong to a single lineage leading to modern humans, with Asian Middle Pleistocene hominins such as Xuchang, Dali, and Hualongdong suggested as transitional forms between Asian Homo erectus and Asian Homo sapiens specimens. In this light, and in recognition of the fossil record of Homo erectus, the findings are consistent with the origin of a human branch that arose within a diversifying Asian Homo erectus population which diverged into Western and Eastern populations. In other words, instead of a unidirectional out-of-Africa model, a multi-directional shuttle dispersal model is more likely to explain the complex phylogenetic connections among African and Eurasian Homo species and or populations. Researchers are still unsure what enabled these hominins to migrate so far past the obstacles that held back their ancestors, but it could be related to climate and ecological changes. Nevertheless, our close ancestors appear to have brought advanced knowledge of tool use with them. These tools were far more sophisticated than the simple items that their predecessors may have used. Many of the major sites with preserved Homo erectus have also preserved Aculean stone tools, which are hand axes that served our ancestors for over 1.5 million years. Normally, when Homo erectus is present, you see these beautiful pear-shaped hand axes, but many Asian sites lack these tools. These stone tools are classified based on how they were made, using flaking techniques, rather than what they were used for, which is still unknown. Nevertheless, it is fairly clear that the tools were sourced from materials that were not immediately available, requiring more sophisticated planning. It marks the beginning of modernity in some ways. But many sites where Homo erectus was discovered are surprisingly devoid of these Aculean axes. Instead, these hominins used tools made of modified muscle shells that functioned as knives. Meanwhile, several studies have shown that Homo erectus built shelters, caught fish, cooked in earthen ovens, and most likely crossed open water in some sort of watercraft, in addition to hunting giant elephants and other dangerous creatures. With that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. And please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos.